Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Sushant working as a database consultant for Ashni. So today I'm going to demonstrate how to connect from Oracle database to heterogeneous data source like Postgres by using DBLink. So let's start. Uh, well, in my, uh, this particular setup that I have, this is my Oracle instance, which is running on which is running on IP address. Okay, let me scroll it up. As you can see, 128.199.113.9. So this is my records host IP address. All right. So in order to configure the DB link, first we have to configure the data, uh, the ODBC gateway. So let me first install the ODBC gateway for configuring the DB link. So this is the command, yum install postgresql hyphen odbc. So this is the odbc driver that I'm going to install on the Oracle host. All right, so once the odbc driver has been installed, I will go to the path slash etc. Uh, here I will create the odbc.ini file using which I will specify the data source name, the service name that I will be using to connect to the remote Postgres server. So this is going to be my entry. Uh, as you can see in the first line, it will be the database service name. So adb store that I will also specify in the next step where we are going to configure the initialization file uh, in the Oracle home HS admin folder. So just make sure the name that you are specifying here, the service name, it has to be same when we will configure the initialization file. All right, uh, so here the driver path that we are specifying, as you can see on this line, so it's a driver path, ODBC driver path that we are specifying. Here the IP address, it will be the IP address of the Postgres host to which we want to connect. And the user, Postgres username and the Postgres user password are using, we will connect to the remote host and the port on which the Postgres server is accepting the incoming connection. And this is the database, Postgres database on which we will connect to the remote or Postgres server and we will execute the queries. All right, I will save the file. Once it has been done, then let me switch to the post Oracle user. Then I will go to Oracle home path. I just send me and here, uh, you can use this. So this is the sample file. You can use this file to create your own config file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the init adb store.ora file. So init followed by the adb store is a service SID that we have to specify. And here I will add the entries. So, so these are the entries that we have added. And here you can see the first line is the FDS connect info. Here we will specify the same service name, just a moment. All right, so here I'm hs underscore fds underscore connecting for here, I'm going to specify the data source name DSN, which we have 
already specified in the odbc.inf file so that same name i'm specifying here the trace level i'm setting it on all right and again this is the odbc driver path that we are going to specify and the odbc.inf file path that we are specifying in the environmental variable let me save the file all right so this is inside the HS admin folder. Okay. Now the next step is to configure the listener, Oracle listener, to listen for incoming connection that will be that will be for the ODBC gateway. So let me try to configure listener. So I will edit the listener.ora file and I will edit the SID list listener, the parameter. So this is the entry that we have added for the ODBC gateway. As you can see here, the ODBC program that we have to specify, gateway program that we have to specify here. All right. And the early library path, that is also one of the important thing. All right. Once it has been done, save the file. Reload your listener. Or maybe before reloading the listener. Let's check the status of the listener. So right now it is just listening for the ORCL test, the particular service. Then I will reload the listener once it has been done. Then let's check again the listener status. And now we can see it is also listening for the EDB store, the database service as well. Okay, so listener has been configured. The next step is to configure the TNS names.ora file, and we will add the entry for the Postgres server for which we have to make the connection. Here, it's a database service name that, uh, so it's, it's, you can specify anything that you want. And here you can see it's the IP address of my Oracle server only. So this is the IP of Oracle server and the port on which the Oracle listener is listening for the ODBC gateway, all right? And the one important thing here, HS equal to on. So by specifying that we are uh, making aware that uh, we have to use the hy hybrid service to connect to the, the to the connect to the heterogeneous data source. Right. Let me save the file. Okay. All right. Next step, I will create the DB link on Oracle host. So this is the command, create public database link, the, uh, the DB link name that is test underscore DB link. And I will connect by using EDB user, password EDB user and the service name is the EDB store. All right, the DB link has been created. So uh, with this, we have completed the initial part on the Oracle site. And then we will have to move on to the Postgres server site where we have to allow connection from the Oracle host. So for this, we'll have to edit the pg underscore hp.com file. So just wait for a few seconds. Let me connect to the 
my Postgres instance, which is running on 184.108. It's a 68.183.184.108, all right. And then I will switch to a Postgres user. I already have my Postgres instance running. Yep, this one, which is a Postgres 12 version. And I have a DB store database, which is owned by the DB user. So let me connect to the DB store database, a DB user, the DB user. And there are many tables inside this particular database. So we'll try to query the employee table from the Oracle site when we execute the query. So let's first see the data. So there are around like 14 rows here on the Postgres employee table. All right. Let's go to PG data. Let me edit my PGHB file. I will just I made the copy paste and I will edit this entry and will add the IP address of my Oracle host. So my Oracle host is running on 128.199.113.9 host. So I will add the entry here to allow the connection. All right, oh, it's already there. No need to add the entry, it's okay. Just reload the config. All right. Oh, okay, so I think we are almost done. Let me go back to my Oracle host. So here I'm back to the Oracle host. And Uh, everything has been set up, then I will just try to connect. Okay, let me share my screen and then let me execute the query. So I'm going to connect, I'm going to query the employee table which is inside the EDB user schema and I will use the TB link that I have created just now. Hopefully it should run. All right. So let me check what is the problem. All right, I think the problem is with the name that I have used is, let me try again. So it's a test underscore dbling, that is the dbling that I have created. Let me execute the query. Hopefully it should be successful this time. And all right, I can see the data, I can fetch the data, right? So I can see the 14 rows has been fetched from here. So it are the, those are the same uh, employee table from the Postgres. It has been fetched uh, remotely from the Oracle host by using the heterogeneous uh, database service. All right, guys. So with this, uh, we can configure the DB link that can connect to the remote Postgres instance and we can fetch the data. We can select the data. We can also do the insert update, the DML operation as well. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks for watching my video. I hope I will share a few more videos in the, uh, in the coming days. So, so say so, stay tuned. All right, thank you guys, bye-bye. So that's it for today, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you find it informative. 
If there is any particular topic that you want us to do a video on, you let us know and we'll get it for you. We'll be happy to do that. And um, make sure you hit that subscribe button because uh, with all your awesome support, we can keep bringing you more stuff. And every time a new video comes, you will know because it'll pop on your screen. Thank you so much. Have a great day.